Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here, back with another severe weather forecast. While the weather is looking quiet through much of this coming week, there are more severe weather days coming, especially on Thursday here from the Euro model showing some severe thunderstorms developing across northern Oklahoma into Kansas as well as Nebraska, with a much better chance of severe thunderstorms possibly an outbreak for Friday this coming week, so about seven days away, we could be looking at a big time severe weather event here, according to the latest Euro model showing these storms here developing along the dry line, capable of producing large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes with a surface flow that rapidly develops over eastern Colorado and moves northeastward towards the Dakota. But that's not it. There could be more severe weather events coming up for next weekend. This would be for April the 27th through the 28th, as the latest Euro model is indicating more severe weather. This is 180 hours out, by the way, for Oklahoma, for Missouri, as well for Nebraska, not for Nebraska, but for Arkansas, there we go, with scattered numerous supercells and thunderstorms along the dry line here, even into Missouri, as well as, say, if you're in Iowa, we have a good chance of seeing severe weather. And then look at this, we have another risk of severe weather too, for April the 29th and the 28th. This is 204 hours out while this is really far. The pattern could be lining up for something like this, folks. So that's why you all need to be getting ready because after all, it is late April into early May-ish where we really have to watch for severe weather events and some of these could be pretty significant as the tornado risk goes up climatology throughout the month of April into early May. And no joke, we do have, again, lots of thunderstorms that do develop along the dry line and perhaps even the cold front all the way across the upper Midwest and the northern plains through the end of this period, through the end of the model, essentially, we're looking at maybe a chance of severe weather too. The reason why this is going to happen is because of the way the pattern is going to be setting up. Right now, we have northwesterly flow over the United States, well, roughly, all right, where we have these wind barbs that are doing this. This is actually helping to keep any moisture from surging northward and a dry line from developing because of this trough that we have over the Hudson Bay area. But we all know the pattern is going to be changing. And once we go forward in time, we really see things changing in a hurry here. All right, and this is why we always watch for these futures, right? So Going forward, we can see there's one trough, right, that's going to bring maybe a threat for severe weather, maybe for Tuesday and a Wednesday, but nothing too significant. But then look what happens. Our first trough ejection moves into the high plains. That's going to kickstart the first day. That would be Thursday for severe weather into Friday. And then guess what? There's more after that. There's another trough ejection right in here this would be for saturday into sunday that would be another big day to watch for severe weather including large hail damaging winds and tornadoes but guess what there's another one look at here maybe another little bit of energy ejecting one right here and then maybe another one and then maybe another one behind it and as long as we have this kind of anemic looking large scale trough across the west we have ridge across the east we get southwesterly flow in between that's going to trigger more moisture um invection and that's going to get some severe weather going along the dry line from say central texas into oklahoma perhaps all the way up north into minnesota wisconsin and iowa including for nebraska so again Really, the days in the sh short term, rather short term, will be on Wednesday or Thursday and Friday. And when we look at all the moisture that's going to be evacuating northward, here is how it's going to look. Take note of those dew points across Texas. Not so bad, right? But by the time we go into the middle of this week, moisture begins to return northward. So this is for Wednesday morning on the 24th of April. And then look at this. We start to gain 60s and 70 dew points in Texas and Oklahoma. So by the time that surface load develops, we have a pretty sharp dry 
line here where we have dew points in the 20s on one side of the dry line where we have um, a lot of high moisture content on the eastern side where we have dew points in the mid 60s perhaps some low 70s and that's not it look at it just sticks around so i think once this pattern sets up we're going to see repeated a uh, look here with moisture going up going northward like this going around where we have a ridge here over the eastern seaboard where we have a trough that is across the west. And again, that's going to help to encourage a lot of this moisture to return northward. And that's going to lead to a lot of instability, as we can see here, with uh, up to about uh, one to 2,000 joules of surface base cape and mixed layer cape, which is the amount of energy for thunderstorms. Once they develop, they could use this energy of becoming really strong, perhaps producing large hail the size of golf balls, and perhaps some damaging winds and tornadoes. And when we go forward, we can see enough um, thunderstorm juice right along that dry line in the high plains. And wherever we have that sharp dry line, and if it bulges out, we can get some crazy stuff going. And that seems to be happening here by the end of the model run from the Euro. We have up to almost 3,000 joules of cape. And look at this. It can get even higher. Look at right around Texas. We have up to almost 4,000 joules of mixed layer cape, which is more than suitable for severe weather. And because of that, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted a risk for severe weather on day six for northern Texas, for western Oklahoma, and for western Kansas. This is not just the first in a several amount of days we could be looking at severe weather. We are also looking at it for day seven. Yes, folks, day seven. The Storm Prediction Center has highlighted a slight risk for severe weather all the way from, say, Iowa into western portion there of Illinois into much of Missouri, eastern um, Kansas, if you are in central and northeastern there of Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, and eastern Nebraska under the risk for severe weather. Now, while day eight is, there's nothing for day eight, I promise you right now, they're probably going to be highlighting something in their next outlook for day seven, because we're going to be looking at a string of severe weather days like we had just recently, but only this could be a little bit more significant because of the fact we're seeing a lot of that moisture, instability, and wind shear coming together. And so I think there's going to be more days highlighted. Right now, it's just day six and day seven. Now, before I do end the video, I do have a few important announcements that I do want to share with you all because this is fairly important as my second Atlantic hurricane seasonal outlook will be released on May 1st. That's a Wednesday. So please mark your calendar if you haven't already. Now, because I've schooled, that might be delayed a little bit. So probably thinking about 2 or 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, that video will be released. That would be 3 or 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time or about 6 or 7 o'clock Central Daylight Time or about 6 or maybe even 8 o'clock for Eastern Daylight Time. Please mark your calendar for that because we do have more agencies that did release their numbers. So you do not want to miss that video at all, including my own. I have updated my numbers for the Atlantic hurricane season myself. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will be on May 25th and runs through May 1st. So this includes rapid updates and live streams. You don't want to miss that because that will begin my Atlantic hurricane season forecast or my, not my seasonal forecast, but you get the idea. You get the drill. We're going to be doing lots of updates on the tropics on a daily basis because we're approaching or going to be inside the hurricane season. And then of course, if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, there's a link in the description below this video where you can get the latest videos and updates on a everyday basis or when I'm able to update, you will get those notifications. And then of course, if you want to follow me to get the latest updates, there's a link in the description to my Twitter or what you call X. Yes, I wanted to correct that. It's either called X or Twitter, how you ever want to call it. It's kind of a sub of Twitter. But anyways, if you want to get latest updates on there, you can. And also, 
If you want to be part of the Discord server, if you want to join today, it's 100% free. There is no, no cost whatsoever. There's a link in the description below this video, an invite link where you can join today. All right. I highly encourage you all to join and that way you get also updates in there. And some of you uh, members in there are also hurricane enthusiasts. So we'll be able to keep you all updated throughout the hurricane season. But anyways, thank you all for watching today's video. If you did like it, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. And I'll be back with you more soon with more updates on this active weather pattern coming.